We want to take a moment here and wish a very, very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers all across the world, especially here on the islands of Hawaii, all of you that are in connection with the family of World Life Christian Center from whatever campus you might be listening in from, whatever platform, we want to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. You know, like that video just rolled in, life doesn't come with a manual, but it does come with a mother. And I can testify of that myself. I'm sure many of you can. And yet, I want to talk to you about the very importance of a mom in our life, what they've meant, but really open it up for even more understanding concerning this great gospel of ours. You know, there's a young man that Paul was speaking to. His name was Timothy, and he was... Paul, as he viewed Timothy's life, was so impacted by Timothy's grandmother and mother and the impact that they had on this young man with this gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of hope. In fact, for all of you mothers, before I open up in a word of prayer, I want you to, to take note of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. And Paul is speaking to Timothy in a letter he says, and when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is also in you. Here, Paul the Apostle is talking about legacy, bringing to Timothy the hope of the gospel, the remembrance of the impact of that living word that went from his grandmother to his mother and then now of course, into Timothy, who became one of the great influencers of his day, building one of the greatest churches known in all of history, not only then, but even in our present, uh, if it was to be evaluated. It was, it was the first mega, mega, super mega church. But I want to talk to you about something, because here Eunice and Lois are being spoken about. It's because of the impact that they had on this young Timothy. And yet Paul is, is alerted to all that. Let me open up with a word of prayer on for all of you moms. And, and then we'll get right into that word and the impact that it had on our lives. Father, we just ask that you would bless this day. As I lift up every person listening to me right now, whether their mother or whether father, children, Lord, we're celebrating on this Mother's Day a day that you've given us to remember the role, the importance, the impact, and the influence of every mother. We pray that they would be blessed this day as your word goes forth, does not return to you void, but accomplishes that which you please. And we're giving you praise, honor, and glory for it. And everyone in agreement said, amen. Now, don't forget, now, when you give me an amen, I can't hear you here because we're doing a virtual outreach to you. We need you to hit those emojis. We need you to write me. I love to have your comments come to us. You know, just put on your comments. If you're on Facebook, just put on your comments in every way you can. Shout it out. Let me know you're with me. And uh, we love the interaction, and we will respond to you. And it's great to hear your voices, even though it's coming on a virtual platform. But here, I want you to understand that Timothy is talking about really the hope of the gospel. He's talking about how this grandmother and this mother had such an impact because of this gospel. And he's talking about the living gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we've been talking about that for a number of, of weeks now. And I want you to see how it has impact on your life. And this is a glorious day to celebrate. Some of you might say, well, Pastor Art, you know what? I don't find much celebration. Today, I'm going through such a, a tough time. I'm here to tell you that God is ready to bring you through a triumphant time in your life. I want you to get a hold of some things here today. Some of us may be walking to the valley of the shadow of death or walking to the valley of Baca, but I'm here to tell you that this gospel that was preached by Eunice, Timothy's grandmother, and Lois, you know, his mother, I want you to realize that this is an impact that we, you and I need to get a hold of and apply to our lives. You know, there's interesting things that happen. No matter who you are, what you're going through, 
I want you to think supernaturally. I want you to think that God is working on your behalf. You know, there's not a patriarch in the Bible that you and I can make reference to that didn't go through a literal valley or a figurative valley, but came out strong when they had their trust in the Lord. I want to share something with you from Psalms 118. It's a psalm that gives us such encouragement that your strength today, all of you listening, your strength today is from the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to begin in verse 8, and it reads like this. Lord, it is much better to trust in you to save me than to put my confidence in someone else. Yes, it is much better to trust in the Lord to save me than to put my confidence in celebrities. Once I was hemmed and surrounded by those who don't love you. But by Yahweh's supernatural power, I overcame all. Yes, they surrounded me like a swarm of killer bees swirling around me. I was trapped like one by a raging fire. I was surrounded with no way out and at the point of collapse. But by Yahweh's supernatural power, I overcame them all. They pushed me right up to the edge and I was ready to fall. But you helped me to triumph and together we overcame them all. Verse 14, Lord, you are my true strength and my glory song, my champion, my savior. The joyful songs I now sing will be sung again in the hearts and homes of all your lovers. My loud shouts of victory will echo throughout the land for Yahweh's right hand conquers valiantly. So here is a man who's talking about how he went through a valley in his time where he was surrounded by opposition, yet he came out with triumphant you know, a triumphant praise of victory. So you might be going through a difficult time. You might be going through uh, a situation. But I want you to lock down right now that God is ready to give you triumph. God has always been ready to cause you to triumph. And the key we're going to find out today. See, that's the salvation of this gospel. The power of the gospel. I understand that things happen on many different fronts that we can all talk about. And for all the people that are listening, the thousands of people that are listening, you can have a thousand different situations. But there's one name and one power source that will help you to conquer whatever thousands and many more thousands of situations. It is the triumph that only Christ can give you when you and I put our trust in him. He has supernatural power, not just power, but supernatural power to intervene and to cause you and I to come out of the situations that we feel, you know, repressed by, oppressed by, dominated by. But today, you're going to hear a voice of victory. Today, you're going to hear the sound of your triumph. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When you become word-centered, word-oriented, strong in God's word, because God's word is his bond, and it's as clear as God speaking to you in person. You don't need to have Jesus show up to you in a vision. He's already given you his word, and his word is his bond, and he is faithful and loyal to his word. You and I just got to believe it, receive it in the name of Jesus, and we're going to help you to understand that is the hope of the gospel that's the saving power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's why Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Don't ever be ashamed of the gospel. Don't ever be ashamed of the healing power. Don't ever be ashamed of the blood. Don't ever be ashamed of the name. Don't ever be ashamed of the power that only Jesus Christ of Nazareth can give you because he is your deliverer. He is your strengthener. He is your power. He's the one who can put your mind straight. He's the one who can straighten out everything that the doctor said they cannot. I'm here to tell you he's here to heal and make you whole. The question, though, that I have for so many people, even on this Mother's Day, and I come to you again with a directive, you know, how strong is your hope today? You know, we just read about Eunice, and we just read about Lois, the grandmother and the mother of Timothy. And they, they poured something into Timothy. It's called the hope of this gospel. How strong is your hope today? How strong is your hope today? You know, has something happened to your hope? You know, did you wake up one day and hope was gone? Have you possibly given up hope? 
I want to encourage you today that we get a hold of the hope and not be removed away from the hope of the gospel. You know, did you know that God has all the hope you will ever need? He's ready to already deposit it. He's not deferring it. He's not holding it back. He's not playing with your life. I'm here to tell you the hope of the gospel is the strength of your life that you and I need to get a hold of today. I mean, not tomorrow, not another hour from now, not even another, you know, time frame, uh, you know, given another message from now. I'm talking about right now. You have tuned in. You have locked in on your platform to listen to this word of thus saith the Lord to you, to you right now. God is speaking to you. How strong is your hope? Because God says we got to we got to ratchet this thing up. We got to get it stronger in our lives. And God wants you to have strong hope in him not hope in the I hope the doctor's gonna give me good I hope the IRS is gonna give me good news I hope this person I hope that no I'm talking about the hope of the gospel now you don't want to put your hope in flesh and blood because your hope in flesh and blood always has a frailty point always has limitations to it I'm talking about if you want to see things turn around you're gonna have to lock into something that the enemy wants hidden from you and that is the hope of the gospel God desires that your hope be strong in him. Did you hear me? That your hope be strong in him, not in your religious service, not in some man, not in some great preacher, and not in some great person, and there's nothing wrong with great people, great friends, but your hope has got to be in the hope giver, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, he has come today to infuse you, to empower you, to maybe redirect you, to break something off of you so you get some hope on the inside of you. You've got to give him permission. You say, well, Pastor Art, how do I give God permission to give me that supernatural hope? If anyone's lacking hope, it's me. How do I give him permission? Please tell me. Well, it's already written in the Bible. It's called believe him. That's right. He said, you're making this too easy. No, I'm not making it too easy. God made it very simple. It's called the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. Do you have all joy? With all peace. Do you have all peace? If you're lacking joy, you're lacking peace, I'm here to tell you the God of hope is ready to fill you up. Not halfway will fill you. Not just have you going on an empty tank. God doesn't want you listening to something today from the gospel and you walking away, you know, half empty or not getting touched. The Spirit of God is alive right now to touch you. The Spirit of God is going to touch you in your home, in your situation, regardless of what you're going through. I know some of you are walking through the valley right now. I know some of you are going through some difficult times. That's exactly why this message is coming to you. That's exactly why you got to lean in. Lean in and listen to the giver of the hope that you've been looking for. Again, there is a world kind of hope and there's a hope found in the word of God. There is a God kind of hope and a man kind of hope. I'm not talking about waiting for some letter to come. I'm not talking about waiting for some report to come. I'm talking about the report that you've already been given. It's called the hope of the gospel that will turn any situation around that you may be facing. Now y'all gotta start amening me right now. Y'all gotta start, come on now. I need, to, I, need to see those, uh, I need to see those responses. Get up on Facebook. Don't just sit there. I want you to get up on Facebook and say, amen, pastor. Tell me where you're from. I mean, last week we had people from the Ukraine that were listening, and they were listening from different parts of the world. I was throwing some shout-outs to them. I need some of you locally to throw some shout-outs to me. It encourages me, and I want to encourage you here today. Listen, what happens to your hope? when it takes a sudden surprise and an unwanted turn. It happens to all of us. I want you to understand our hope, we think gets deferred. Some of you are thinking right now, well, you know, Pastor R, it sounds good, but you don't understand, I, I don't have any hope. Well, that's why I'm here today. I'm here to give you some hope, not because I'm giving it to you, but because the gospel is giving it to you. Do not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Some of you are right on the edge right now to throw your hope away on your marriage, to throw your hope away on your finances, to throw your hope away maybe on your dream, to throw your hope away on your children because of things that have happened that you didn't want to happen, God didn't want them to happen. Okay, so I don't want you to get off 
of trusting in the hope of the gospel. See, when things happen, as I've said before, our hearts get sick. But God wants to bring a desire to you, his desire. He wants to remove away the sickness. One of the sicknesses that we, uh, that we sometimes are affected by when things happen in our life is we get hopeless. You know, sometimes you just walk around the court and suddenly you find yourself face to face with a, with a personal crisis or, you know, uh, maybe the passing of a loved one or maybe the ache of some kind of betrayal or, or maybe some act of rejection by someone in your life or some unexpected breakup in a relationship or anxiety over a stormy marriage or a financial loss or the agony of a son and daughter who has taken a destructive path. I'm here to tell you the hope of the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the very one who rose from the dead, who lives on the inside of you, if you are a believer right now, has more hope to get you stirred up, to get you to believing. Remember what hope is now. Hope is that joyful expectation for a favorable outcome. He said, well, Pastor Art, it doesn't feel favorable. It doesn't look favorable. It doesn't look like anything's going to turn around. I'm here to tell you, you're talking about a different kind of hope. You're looking at your circumstances instead of looking at the Word of God. It's the gospel, the Word of God that gives you uh, the hope that you're looking for. Did you know, did you, did you know that there's a hope that will not fail you? That's exactly right. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it talks about a hope that will not, will not fail you, will never fail you. And I know what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm pressing in on some of you. I'm asking some of you to stretch your faith beyond anything you've ever done. Maybe you've been a temperate person. Maybe you just thought because of wrong teaching, you know, you need somebody to help you to misunderstand the Bible. Some people, they're just too educated. That's what I like to say. They just think they're too educated to read the Bible for what it says. You don't have to interpret the Bible. You just have to read the Bible and receive the word that God has given you. And that's what's going to stir hope on the inside of you. But in Romans chapter 5, 5, it says, Now hope does not disappoint because of the love of God that has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that was given to us. Did you know that God wants you to have hope now? Okay, let me, let me put something together. Let me package something for you right now. Earlier, I, I mentioned what happens when hope is deferred. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Now, the word deferred means postponed, delayed, put off, out of reach. I want you to understand something right now. The hope of the gospel is not postponed. The hope of the gospel is not delayed. The hope of the gospel is not out of your reach. No man, no circumstance can ever stop the hope of the gospel. And I want you to understand, it does, it's not based on what a man does, what a person does, what a doctor says, what a financial institution says, or what someone might say that you want them to say. I'm here to tell you there is hope, joyful expectation for a favorable outcome, regardless of what goes on around you and who's around you or who's not around you. The hope of the gospel, hopelessness has been broken. Hopelessness has been destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'm going to prove that to you. Again, I read a moment ago. It says, now hope does not disappoint. In the Amplified Bible, it says it this way. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us. Let me read it to you from the, the, the Passion Translation. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God. He's talking to born again believers like you. One more from the voice translation. And hope will never fail to satisfy our deepest need because the Holy Spirit was given to us and has flooded our hearts with his love. Remember, I read to you last week. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
This hope that I'm talking about doesn't come through the mail, doesn't come through a phone call per se, doesn't come through some other flesh and blood vessel. It comes straight from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, that's the hope you got to get anchored in first. God wants you to abound in this kind of hope that no matter what goes on around you, no, no matter what happens in your life, there's going to be this gospel hope that I'm going to overcome. I'm going to recover because I'm going through the valley of backup. I'm going through the situation for the Lord thy God is with me. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking to somebody. Now, right there, y'all need to be shouting out right now. Just give me some amens. Throw up some emojis now. Let me know how this is ministering to you. Write me on Facebook. Come on. I, I need to hear what you got to say because it's important. Listen. The enemy is the one that wants to make you sick. God is the one who wants to make you well. God has come to make you whole. And there's, here's what I'm going to share with you. There is a hope. And I'm going to prove to you, I've been waiting to teach this for like three weeks now. I want you to get a hold of this. When Jesus came, he broke the power of your three greatest enemies. That is powerlessness, hopelessness, and aimlessness. I call these the three twisted, tormenting sisters. They are the three tormentors. They are, they racket and they, they hurt and they torment so many people. In every nation, of every color, of every tribe, of every type of circumstance. And the reason Jesus came is to destroy powerlessness over your life. To destroy hopelessness over your life. To destroy aimlessness over your life. You don't have to live powerless anymore. You don't have to live hopeless anymore. You don't have to live aimless anymore. Because of what Jesus Christ of Nazareth through the cross of Calvary with his shed blood did for you. And I'll not be ashamed of the fact that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You are free from hopelessness. You are free from living powerless. You are free from living aimless. That is not you anymore, child of God. That has been broken. You don't have to wait like some boy waiting for a bus on the on a bench outside. The hope of the gospel is yours now. The power of God is yours now. Purpose or having aim in your life is yours now. You got the, the greater one living on the inside of you. You know, I like saying as the enemy once tried to have these three tormentors work against us, God says a threefold cord is not easily broken. The threefold cord for the believer today is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Today, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I'm talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit dwell on the inside of you today. There's a threefold cord, it will not be broken. All you and I have to do is give him permission. All you and I have to do is believe the gospel, the gospel of hope. I refuse to let go of the gospel of hope. I don't care what the doctor say. I don't care who said what. I'm not going to let go of this promise in this word. I'm going to prove it to you. Thank God I'm going to get to it. And I'm going to bring to you a great testimony that's going to help you to understand how to build the priesthood family. What you and I can do to break through, break out, and break into a whole new territory. You know, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 and 36 from the Living Bible, it says, Jesus traveled around through all the cities and villages of the area, teaching in the Jewish synagogues and announcing the good news of the kingdom. And wherever he went, he healed people of every sort of illness. Listen to me. I, it says here, every sort of illness. Jesus healed or made whole every sort of illness. That's powerlessness, that's hopelessness, and it's aimless. Watch this now. Now, illness means evil. It's another word for evil. It means wickedness. It means, you know, something that's diabolical, something that's a dis-ease. Is there a dis-ease in your life? Is there a discomfort in your life? Is there some kind of disorder in your life? Is there trouble in your life? Like I shared before, I'll share with you again. God has come to deliver us and set us free in at minimum seven areas. Spirit, 
soul, body, financially, socially, meaning our relationships is number five. Number six is domestically, meaning our families and in our ministries. He has set us free in all those areas, and he's done much, 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 much more in his salvation for us. It goes on, though, in verse 36, and it says, And what compassion he felt for the crowds that came, because their problems were so great. When your problems are so great, how do you feel? Powerless. It goes on to say, And they did not know what to do. When you don't know what to do, how do you feel? Hopeless. And they didn't know where to go for help. When you don't know where to go for help, how do you feel? Aimless. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. See, Jesus is the great shepherd. And when you allow him to come into your heart, he breaks instantly. The day that you pray with him, ask him to come into your heart, powerlessness over your life. He breaks it completely. Absolutely destroys it. He destroys the work of the devil. He destroys hopelessness and aimlessness. But here's what I want you to understand. He is the God of all hope. I want to share with you a testimony. Charlie and San Abi High, great leaders there in Kahului, Maui. They're over Word of Life, Maui. But their story speaks so much. It speaks of the priesthood family. It speaks of what God can do to give you security, to give you significance, to give you, let me put it this way, power, hope, purpose. And this is their story. On this Mother's Day, you're going to be encouraged by what they have to say and share with you. Watch this. As a young girl growing up, being part black, part Hawaiian, I struggled with my identity. I didn't know how to be one, I didn't know how to be the other, and as a result, I had low self-esteem, struggled with my self-confidence, always on a quest to prove myself. I got married at a time that I wasn't ready for it, and in that relationship, it was very unhealthy. Going through postpartum depression, it put me in a situation where I started contemplating things that were not well, not wise. It got so bad to the point that I even contemplated suicide because I felt that was what the answer was, to end the pain, to end all the hurt. One morning I was slipping through the channels and came across the Word of Life program and there was Pastor Art. And the message he was sharing brought hope to my heart. It helped me to see that things didn't have to stay the way that they were, and that change was possible, and that change could begin with me. By becoming purposefully connected to this church, I was able to grow and become what God needed me to become. I consistently attended services, got planted in a life group, started attending the classes, and even the powerful encounter weekends. And through those experiences, I got to see the value of what God placed in my life. It was also through those opportunities and through serving in the house that I had the opportunity to meet my mighty man of God, my current husband, Stan. He helped me to learn how to love again. He helped me to understand God's love for me. Wow, we never would have imagined that we'd be where we are today. As campus leads, for Word of Life Kahului, and as G12 leaders under Pastor Art and Pastor Kuna. I'm so blessed to say that God has done such a great work in our family. Our children are serving right alongside of us. They're engaged in the vision. They're attending life group. They're being equipped through destiny training. They are making an impact for their generation and the generations to come. And as a priesthood family, we're embracing everything that God has for us through this G12 vision. 
it is very important that as a dad myself that my kid sees the example as who I am in Christ. We have a great opportunity to set the next generation up to be very successful for the kingdom of God. Our obedience now, now in the vision as, as leaders, as disciples, as, as, as husband, as dads, especially being a dad to the next generation. God is really doing a great work here at Word of Life Kahului. It's exciting to see people embrace the vision for themselves and see the value of discipleship through relationship. I can recall a family who just recently started attending. They were going through a lot of challenges, a lot of hurt, and in the midst of it all, they knew that something needed to change. The wife made a decision to step out in faith and to come anyway. Even though her husband wasn't coming, even though her kids weren't coming, she chose to step out and come on her own. She allowed the word to work in her. She allowed God to change her from the inside out. And I can share with you today, she's attending service with her entire family. She's getting equipped through our destiny training classes. She's a Timothy to one of my G12 leaders. And she's seeing God work on a real level. Miracles are happening in her own life. She recently went through a challenge in her health. Right after going through a leadership training with Pastor Art here at Kahului campus. And I was so blessed hearing her take hold of the words that we share. And the words weren't our own, they were God's word. And when she applied it to her life, she went into that situation with a strong spirit, with a conquering spirit. The doctors told her, oh, this could possibly be meningitis. And with everything in her, she says, well, I have big faith and have a big God. And I declare I am healed. She walked out a couple days later and was back in training the next week. But she also shared, and it humbled me to hear her say this, she saw God do what he did in us. And she heard our story. And she wanted to see God do the same for her. And because I told her that God is no respecter of persons, what he did for us, he can do for you. She took that to heart and she allowed it to become a reality in her life. And today, she's in the house, receiving what God has for her, serving the house, serving God's people, and attending church with her family. It's amazing to see what this G12 vision has done to restore my life. And now I'm equipped to help others see restoration in their own lives so they can experience God's awesome love and His strength and His power in their own lives each and every day. I see through the eyes of faith. And that's one of the language Pastor Kuna said, through the eyes of faith. I see this campus growing. I see, I see down the line in my own prayer time, even other campuses on this island. You know, I see, you know, the 12 getting their 12, you know, 144 and then 17, 28. So I believe, I know my wife and I believe that it will come to pass, that we'll see you know, people's lives will be changed and, you know, people's hearts will be changed, marriage will be restored, um, you know, you know, the next generation will rise up, you know, take their position in school and really run with the vision, you know, pray for the teachers, pray for the principals, pray for, you know, the classmates, you know, you know, having life groups in school. I see all that and I believe it. I believe it, it will come to pass. That's what the G12 vision is, to win souls and make disciples. I'm so thankful for this G12 vision, for what it's done for me personally, what it's done for my family, and what it's enabling us to do to reach people and touch lives right here in Maui. Pastor Arden Kuna, thank you for your obedience, your willingness to embrace this heavenly vision. Pastor Cesar and Pastor Claudia, we honor you and we thank you for bringing this heavenly vision to us here so that we together can do great things for the kingdom of God.
I want to thank uh, Stan and Charlie Abihai all the way from Kahului, Maui. You know, that's such a great church. If you live on the island of Maui, you have got to go and visit the amazing, incredible people who love God and love people with a passion, with the Aloha spirit that is straight out of heaven. You know, it's interesting that we're hearing something on Mother's Day from a mother. A mother who at one time, well, prior to her situation, you know, at one time in her life she was considering, she said the word suicide, because of a number of different things happened. But there's a hope that rose up that went beyond the circumstances and beyond the feelings. And that's the beauty of uh, Charlie, her story, and of course Stan and the amazing church. That's what they're there to help us to understand. That we're, we're here on this earth and we don't have to live with any kind of powerlessness, with any kind of hopelessness, or any kind of aimlessness. And you know what? That's available to everybody listening to me right now. No matter where you've been, what's been done to you, what you've done, how long it's happened in your life, today is a day for that to be broken off of you. All you have to do is to believe in the God of hope. He's the one who promises you that he'll fill you as the God of living hope with joy and with peace. Not the world kind of peace, not the world kind of joy but his joy, and cause you to abound in hope. I know things may look difficult. I know things may look troubling. I know reports are this way or that way, but God can turn it around and make it the right way, but it all begins by you believing in him, by you asking him to come into your heart. I know for some of you, you struggle with this. Some of you, you, you question this. Your understanding or your mind, you know, cannot figure out God. Because believing in God is called faith in God. And the Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can go unto the Father except by him. Religion won't do it. Good works won't do it. You know, your great efforts won't do it. You know, it is having faith in the grace of God towards you. It's something that you and I could not earn. It's something that you and I could never be worthy enough to receive in our own good works. I know that challenges many people that pride themselves on becoming a self-made man or a self-made woman, and uh, you've pride yourself in your accomplishments. And maybe I'm challenging somebody right now, and you pride yourself in uh, whether it's your musical accomplishments, your singing accomplishments, your, your accomplishments in economy, your accomplishments in, uh, as you work up the ladder, and yet you've not found happiness. You've not found joy. And that's why, you know, you're driven all the time. You're driven and driven and driven because there's no satisfaction. Because as much as you get to your next level or move to your next relationship, there's something that's always unsatisfied in us, and that's called eternity. And the book of Ecclesiastes talks about how God has placed eternity to satisfy our souls into every person. And we sometimes try to put relationships to fill it. We try to get more money to fill it, a bigger house to fill it, you know, a, a, another level of promotion to fill it. And there's nothing wrong in those things per se, but they will never, ever, ever, ever satisfy you. And some of you listening to me right now in the quietness of your own uh, space where you're at right now, on whatever platform you're listening to me, I'm sharing this only out of encouragement. You know you're not satisfied. You know you're not happy. You know that you put on that good work face, you know, and you go out there and you trudge because that's your makeup. You've been driven all your life. But with all that driving, you've not found eternal satisfaction because there's a hope that only God can give you. There's a power that only comes by the Holy Spirit. There's a purpose for why to live this life that can only come from God. You know, that's what Charlie found many years ago. Stan found many years ago. And now, by the grace of God, the mercy of God, you know, they're endeavoring with an incredible group of people there 
amazing leaders from all walks of life, of all dimensions, of all skill factors, all of them, that I have seen and had the privilege to meet, honored that they'd be part of the family, World Life Christian Center, are there making an eternal difference in the island of Maui and throughout the islands of Hawaii. Because God has placed us here to prosper. And I want you to know today, I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know what you might be facing. And you might be seriously struggling and you have had no rest and no sleep for a long time. You've been anxious, you've been worried. Somebody listening to me has been having panic attacks over and over again because you're just thinking of the worst that's gonna happen, the worst that's gonna happen, the worst that's gonna happen. And if you'll trust God, if you'll trust him to save your soul, if you'll trust him, if you'll open up your heart and let him come in, he'll do more than what men could ever promise you. Like Solomon says, his wisdom is greater than all the gold and all the silver and all the jewels of this world. Most people go after those things thinking they're going to find satisfaction. Some of you listen to me. It's exactly what you have. You have the gold. You have the riches. But you have no satisfaction. Because today is your day of salvation. Today is a day where Jesus is knocking on your heart. He says, if you'll let me in, I will truly do more than you ever knew I could do. I could bring you the peace and fill you with joy that no man, no woman could ever give you. No job, no promotion, no relocation, nothing. But I can satisfy you. It's what God's saying to many of you listening to me right now. Pray this prayer after me. It's your words of sincerity. I just lead you. But when you open up your heart to him, the Bible says that he'll never turn out anyone or turn away anyone who cries out to him. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you. I may not know you. I may not have ever known you. But I ask you now that if you can save this sinner, save me. You promised that you came to the cross to pay for all of my sins, to take away all my transgressions. Father, I don't know how your son does this. But right now, I'm asking for it to be done in my heart. I'm tired, Lord, of my hard heart, my stony heart, my unloving and insensitive heart. Lord, if ever I needed a miracle, I need a miracle in my heart right now. Have mercy on me, Lord. Save my life. By faith, Jesus I ask you to become my personal Savior. I want to thank you that you said if I would ask, you would come. Fill my heart with your love, your salvation, and your Holy Spirit. By faith, I pray this in Jesus' name mighty name. Amen. Amen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you, now you got to start giving me some feedback on Facebook. Now you got to start throwing up those emojis. Hey, service ain't over yet. Just about is. But I want you to understand, I have got to hear from you. Listen, I don't want to wait for a letter. I want you to email me. I want you to jump up on Facebook or however you want to communicate to me. But let me know what God has done in your life. And we want to rejoice with you. If you'll let us know, we'll get right back to you. We'll respond to you. Listen, it is such a privilege to pray for each and every one of you. And now I want to pray one more prayer. Because I know there's people listening to me right now. And you have contemplated suicide. You have contemplated ending your life. 
you have contemplated ending something, causing something to have. I don't know whether it's your life or something that you wanted to end. And God is trying to tell you right now, you've never had my hope in your life, but now you do. Put a stop to it now. I want to pray that with the next 36 hours, God will intervene in your life in such a dramatic way that you will know that only God could do this. I don't even know your situation, but I know with the next 36 hours, God's going to do something in your life. All I'm asking you to do is don't make a move. Trust him. God of living hope. Some of you right now, even as I'm speaking, are sensing, because you just prayed that prayer with me, you're sensing that hope begin to rise. There's something that doesn't make sense to your mind, but something is stirring. Uh, it's almost like a fresh, it's like you're waking up to something. And that's the hope of the gospel. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray right now and come against that spirit and any kind of you know, suicide is a word for taking one's life, but it's also can be, you know, more figurative where you try to take and just end something. It's the ending of something. And so God is saying to all of you, don't end the marriage, don't end the relationship, don't end, don't give up, don't throw it away, stop, stop and let me work. That's what he's asking, stop and let me work. You have power now. You have my hope is what he's saying to you now. And you're no longer aimless. I will give you understanding. Let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person listening to me right now. Then when they heard that word suicide, something alerted on the inside of them. Maybe it was not for their own life or maybe it was. Lord, right now, I come against that demonic spirit of suicide that has tried to come against any person's life on whatever part of the world or on our islands they might be. Maybe they're alone right now. They feel so betrayed. They feel so lonely. They feel so abandoned. But I bind that spirit. I break its power right now in the name of Jesus that it would not have, Father God, a finished course in their life. Lord, you are the God of the turnaround. And I pray right now, make your presence known immediately right now in Jesus' name over their lives. And for those of you who wanted to give up on something and put an end to something, a marriage, a relationship, something, a dream, something that you've been really contemplating and you're at the point of tipping into the negative, God says, stop. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for those as well. I pray for people who prior to this message had no hope. But now, Lord, we're not talking about waiting for somebody. We're talking about the hope that is now the hope of the gospel. God of the living hope show up in their lives, giving them wisdom, understanding, insights into an area that they knew not. But now that you're in their life, big time, Lord, show yourself strong. Show yourself in grace. Show yourself in mercy. Show yourself in your love that you have for each and every one of them. Make yourself real to them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. I expect to hear great news come from your lives. Watch what the God of living hope does for you. God bless each and every one of you. Now go out and have a hope abounding filled day. In Jesus' name, God bless.